Hello and welcome to the Houston Hispanic Chamber of Commerce program, Houston Legends. I'm Dr. Laura Murillo, President and CEO, and on behalf of our Board of Directors, we want to thank you for joining us here on theCUBE. Today we've got a great guest. You know him, you recognize him from the Houston Astros, no other than Jeff Luna, who's the General Manager for the Houston Astros. They had a great season. They're gearing up for 2019. He's going to tell us all about it, but most importantly, we're going to learn a little bit more about Jeff, things you wouldn't know, and how he became who he is today. So. Thanks for joining us. Welcome and thank you. Thank you, it's a pleasure to be on the show. Well, Happy New Year, it's still January, I still get to say that. Yeah, for a few more days, I think. A few more days, well thanks for joining us and the, the partnership that you all have had with the Houston Hispanic Chamber of Commerce now. I know we uh, have been able to have a lot of, of our corporate sponsors, our board of directors uh, join you for your games at the, at the suite that the chamber has with you all. And it's been such fun to see Houston rally behind the Astros. Well, it certainly has, and the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce is really important to us as the Astros. We recognize that we live in a very diverse community, and there's a large Hispanic population here in Houston, and we want to take advantage of that. And you know, we're competing with soccer and boxing and some of the sports that are more popular maybe in south of the border, but uh, baseball is becoming better, more and more popular here in the States and, and throughout the world. Well, it is, and we see that, that every game is filled now. People mm -hmm. are excited about it, and how wonderful. Anywhere you go in the city, in the airport, they're wearing their caps their jerseys, you see it all over the place. We do, and in fact, I travel with the team all over the country, and I see Houston Astros caps everywhere. Yeah. I was just in Mexico last week, I saw people wearing caps. Uh, no matter where I go, I was in South Africa last summer and I saw a couple of caps, so. Uh, Houston Astros are becoming an international brand. And that's what we want for a city that, again, is trying to attract business and make sure people know all the great things we're doing here and with our Rockets and the Texans and, and so many other sports teams, we definitely are that uh, mecca for sports and certainly the mecca for entrepreneurship. So thanks again sure. for all of the time you all spend with us, all of your team, how vested they are in the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. And looking out in the stands, I mean, you see so many people, I know that this is a very big market for sports, uh, Hispanics, and I know you all have tailored a lot of your uh, messaging and, and just outreach to that particular community and to others as well. Uh, the different fairs that you have before the games have been a big attraction for families. They have been, and, and we're doing the, a unique event this year. We're traveling to Mexico to play two games okay. against the Angels. Yes, in and Monterrey, I know, is one of them, right? Uh, they're both going to be in Monterrey okay. on, on the 5th of May, which is okay. a, a holiday. Yes. Uh, and we're really looking forward to expanding our reach into Mexico and having many of our fans from Houston travel down there with us. Absolutely, we need to go and cover uh, some footage there on you guys sure. and put it on one of our programs because people are so excited about it. It's amazing how many people will show up for, for training and any other opportunities they have. So Mexico, speaking of which, you were born in Mexico. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about how all that happened. Well, it's interesting. It's almost the reverse of the uh, Mexican-Americans that live here in Texas. My parents were Americans. Mm -hmm. They moved to Mexico in 1965 with the idea of staying there for a couple of years, yeah. and they never left. And I was born there in 1966 as an, as an American born in Mexico. I went through primary school, went through middle school, went through half of high school down there. Mm -hmm. um, my entire cultural upbringing was in either Mexico City or Guadalajara, the two cities we lived in. Mm -hmm. And I really felt as I came back to the US for college that I didn't know exactly what I was. Was I Mexican? Was I American? Uh, did it really matter? And I know a lot of uh, Hispanics in the US feel the same way, um, but it was an incredible upbringing to be able to um, really learn and appreciate everything about what it's like to grow up somewhere else beyond the United States mm -hmm. and still have that connection to the United States to me was amazing. Mm -hmm. Most of my childhood summers were spent in Texas, okay. in the Hill Country, I went to summer camp. Uh, my first baseball game was at the Astrodome. Um, so I had a lot of connections to Texas and I always wanted to come back here. Uh, but I ended up going to uh, college on the East Coast mm -hmm. and then uh, graduate school in the Midwest and then worked on the West Coast. So it wasn't until Jim Crane offered me the job to be the GM of the Astros that I finally had a chance to move back to Texas. Where you I, belong. It back really to felt Texas. like this was an extension of Mexico and really yeah. my home state in the U.S. Yeah. So it was really fun to be able it's to come back here. It's a real hybrid of uh, you know Mexico and the United exactly. States. So let's talk about your parents. What did they do, and what took them to Mexico in the first place? My dad was in the advertising uh, world okay. and uh, decided to take a two-year job with McCann Erickson, one of the big advertising agencies. Yes in Mexico, and then when he was down there, he realized there wasn't a good uh, publication for English-speaking tourists to, to discover Mexico. So he started doing it on the side. Mm -hmm. It became more than a side project. He quit his job with the advertising agency and created a, a essentially a guidebook to Mexico. So 
us kids, there were three of us, and we had to go almost every weekend mm -hmm. to the resorts, to Puerto Vallarta, I'm to Acapulco, so to Cancun, <laughs> to write up. My dad had to check out the restaurants yeah, and see, the, see if the hotels were doing well and sell advertising for the book. Yeah. So, you know, a lot, a lot of my poor childhood was spent in the resorts, in, resorts. Uh, in these hotels and eating at these restaurants. But How it really fun. did expand my view of uh, what life is like. And uh, I saw so many from Oaxaca to Puebla to Toluca, um, Chihuahua, all the different yes. parts of Mexico. So by the time I left Mexico to go to college, I knew I knew all these little towns. I knew yeah. every resort. You I knew, knew every more town. about Mexico than a I lot really of uh, U.S. born Mexicans. Exactly. Well, what an interesting childhood. And so you come back to the United States, and I know part of your career was with McKinsey. Right. Uh, and your background in terms of education, engineering, economics. So how do you end up? doing the work you do and we're going to talk about sure. that because it's very fascinating to me right when we get back stay tuned <laughs> 